Okay, I'll get started then. <clears throat> right. Oh, hang on. Oh, second person. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's a workshop. Hi, Claire. I was just. Uh, Hi. Where are you? But where are you from? I'm from uh, Volunteer Centre Salford in Manchester. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Bit more local. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Global conference and they're two, two metres apart from each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you use Civi, Claire? Yes, we do. We have um, a what we call a volunteering portal mm. um, that we use to match volunteers up with opportunities and we use Civi to do that. But I think it's, I'm not really the technical person. Um, mm that's someone else in the organization who's on leave this week but I think what ours is is a plug-in right type system but for the um for the covid response we've used web forms to register volunteers that's the mm. way we did it because our the council for council set up well it was some of the councillors set up a facebook page um, yeah. and got like I think it was about 600 people registering in a couple of days who wanted mm. to volunteer, but they had no way to manage them. <laughs> so they came to us. Um, and basically what we did is set up a registration on our website. They registered yeah. on our website. So their info was then on a web form. on Civi. Yeah. So that's the way we did it. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just going to run through what, what we've done and how we've used it and stuff but yeah if you've got any questions at any time as there's only a few of us just like butt in and just ask a question <laughs> just from the web chat as well um milan has said uh, hi guys milan from catalyst balkans belgrade uh, looking forward to the presentation and then he said no problem to i think you're going off for a cup of tea oh uh, yeah so he's uh, yeah so he, he is here yeah. yeah yeah i'm here i was uh, ah, here we go oh, okay yeah, yeah. hi I, I had a I had to go where the kings go on the walk yeah, on foot so I had <laughs> the toilet yeah so it's, it, I'm I'm here maybe maybe I will be around because I have two cats and they are pretty much silly but I'm here I'm, I'm, I'm trying to follow so sorry I was like in one day. yeah okay I, okay I heard you so do, do you need something for me to tell something about I I can or whatever you want. I was looking forward to see your presentation and how do you use CV Volunteer because for me it's like interesting plugin that I still don't comprehend it very well. Mm. But I would like to see your 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 perspective. So that's that's the reason why I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I think um I can see Caroline's coming in as well. Um she works with me at May nice. Care. So hello, hello Caroline. So she might be able to <laughs> chip in as well. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've got any questions as we go along, I'll, I'll try and answer them. But equally, like Nick and Rose, while well, Rose is doing something, but Nick said he'd, you know, can help answer stuff as well in the main hall if I don't know it because this is quite new to to us as well. Um, so I'll I'll start going through it, like I said. And if you want to chip in, just 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 put in. Um, okay. So I, I, I'll turn off my mic, sorry, because oh, okay. of the cat. <laughs> um, I can't see my own presentation now. What how do I get rid of these people? Right. Okay, I'm just, just rid of <laughs> I've just put you to one side. Okay, so just to explain the situation um of how we came to use of volunteer. So um Leeds City Council, um, which is our local government body for the city uh, basically took over 33 cha charities across the city to be these emergency hubs um, so a bit like you Claire I suppose they the, the sort of council-led um, like volunteer office voluntary action leads they're called they got everybody to sign up online um, who wanted to help across Leeds in different ways and they had like it was well over 5,000 people in the end it was it was mad 
Um, and then what they did is they looked at where everybody lived and then sent out all the volunteers to each individual hub. So we got sent uh, easily like a couple of hundred people and then and we already had 90 local people as volunteers anyway. So just literally sort of overnight, we got an influx of like hundreds of people and loads of people were ringing and emailing saying they wanted to help. And yeah, we just were sort of... Oh, <laughs> you know, had to had to think of something. Um, so the aim of what the council were trying to do and what we were trying to do to facilitate it was that vulnerable vulnerable people in Leeds would make a request for support to the council, and if they lived in our postcode, if they lived in our area, they were then given you know given to us, um, and then we had to we have to match up. Uh, we had to find a volunteer basically to go out and um, and you know do the shopping or the the prescription collection or or whatever it is uh, for them. So that was sort of the aim of it. Um, but because yeah, because of the sort of uh, the sheer numbers of people, because we're, we're very small charity, we're really very very local. So um, and you know I'm part time. A lot of our staff are part time and uh and we also have a thousand older people to support as well in the community so we had a lot on our plate so we needed something that could manage a large number of volunteers um and contact everybody really quickly um and we wanted i wanted to do something that was which allowed the volunteers to select what they wanted to do rather than me um linking them up or signing them up or set, or ringing around all the time saying can you do this can you do that and um yeah sort of create something that was kind of a bit standardized so that everyone could use it and it yeah it was just like a a good platform a basis to go from so that's where why we turned to civvy volunteer and I only came across it because I sort of just I just googled the word civvy and volunteer and see if it could do anything and I found this extension I was like yay <laughs> I was like Rose add on this extension for me um because we already use civvy uh we have our thousand members on there already um so this means that everything would be in one place for all the staff to be able to use it and obviously create reports because we have to report regularly back to the council um, and keep records of finances and things like that. Um, and then, um, yeah, it, it offered most of the features of what we wanted. It's not perfect, uh, but I'll come on to that. Um, so how we use Civi. So a bit like what Claire said, um, initially, uh, we because of data protection and everything i just had to ask all the volunteers to sign up again <laughs> um via our an online an online form which you can see on the screen um just so that it was really quick to enter all these new volunteers straight onto the system and they were ready to go and you know that was really quick to set up um you know we got that work ready and working in a day and and most of the volunteers are signed up within a day so we were it was really quick and easy to do um so on on the in civi itself there's um you click on volunteers and create a new project so this shows you i'm just gonna have to move my little thing this shows you here um what creating a project is now we had to we just did one project for basically lockdown support um and use really generic details for it because we had because of the nature of the shifts that were coming in um yeah we didn't want to have millions of projects um so there wasn't really uh any description use we just had the the title of the the volunteer role of community care volunteers um and 
you can add in uh you can see at the bottom where it says manager you can add in all the different staff members you want to um be involved with the project they can then edit it or receive alerts um and the beneficiary again because there's going to be so many beneficiaries and we didn't have their information necessarily um we just created one single lead city council beneficiary as a way to just link it onto civi which which isn't ideal this isn't that that's not an ideal way of doing it really um but ideally we'd have it all the shifts linked to um you know somebody on civi but because of data protection obviously we can't we couldn't be adding people's details on you know without their permission so this is the way we got around it um so once we got the project set up um each volunteer shift um basically it was all very unique so we had to create an individual role for every single shift so we got well over 200 roles on this project now which you can see on the screen um and again this bit it, this part of the civi volunteer i found a bit frustrating because there's no way to put background information in that I that you know that we could figure out how to do it um so you could see it like one of the examples here it says like phone befriender for Mr B <laughs> so when someone signs up for that they get an automated email um but it just says phone befriender for Mr B but if we could add in hidden information in the background to that role so where it says you know phone a friend for Mr. You know Bedford or whatever. Um, you know, it would be make it a lot quicker to automate sort of responses and get information out there, which we're having to do manually at the moment. Um, so yeah, it was. It's been quite tricky to make lots of different unique roles <laughs> that doesn't give away any personal information whatsoever, um, and then you can't delete any of them either because if you delete it it deletes the record off of civi so um it says 166 on there but we're, we're well over that now um so so yeah that's one of the sort of downsides to it but um it does the job um and every time you create a role um you can that you then create a shift we create a shift for that role which is then advertised on a public page but this page was great so you've got a list of all the so you can see how it looks in the end so um the project is the, just the community care volunteers which is fine with is just lead city council so you might normally have your um you know your referral name there or something like that but again because it's a public page we couldn't we you can't be advertising people's names then the role um and there's a look you can see a tiny little speech mark there next to the like e ms e and that gives a bit more detail about the role and then the date of when it is and all people need to do is just click sign up um click which ones they'd like to do and sign up um and then who, who whoever's looking after it so me i'll get an alert to say you know this volunteer signed up to do this shift which is great um and both me this is what i get this is the alert i get um and also the volunteer gets now this is the this email can be edited so we again we made it really really simple um so we just basically repeated what was already on that on the web page pre this web page basically we just repeated it again here um and then <laughs> this is what i mean where um it would be good if if there was a way to enter um hidden data like the name of like ms jd 
and her actual address so that when somebody received this automated email it actually said oh well thanks for helping out you know Joan Dodd um, you know this is what you have to do this is her address off you go basically um, and it would make it really smooth and automated um, but we we couldn't figure out a way to do that so at the moment we just get this alert to let us know that somebody's going to be doing this uh volunteering um ooh. oh i didn't change that picture uh sorry where's that oh no i didn't change the picture on this one so sorry guys it's the wrong picture but basically <laughs> uh we we then had to utilize um Te civi uh, message templates um so to make it easier so like when wendy who's one of our volunteers signed up we'd generate um we just go on her her you know her profile page on civi and email her straight from there using a shopping template or something like that and all we then have to fill in is that background data of the name of the person who needs help, where to go, when, uh, and telephone number. Um, so it's, it's not a much, um, you know, background information really that, uh, that needs to go in, but it was, it was just a little, it's just a little detail that would have made it a little bit smoother and easier to do. Um, but we just do it manually. Um, and then what, when a volunteer signs up as well, it also creates um, a record. So on Wendy's um, profile under records, it creates a new volunteer record that, uh, so, so we know she's got a record of volunteering, but again, some of the information about the role and things just doesn't transfer over. So it's like really, it's really vague when you look at it. So again, you can see on the screen here, all the bits highlighted in red, these are basically things that ideally would be great to be just, you know, transfer that data from the civvy role, the civvy volunteer thing into the record. Cause you do add in the duration in minutes into a, a civvy volunteer shift but for some reason we could not get it to come over into the record um, and the subject as well is always the project name, not the, the role name of the, vol of the volunteer shift. So again, these are sort of the little bits that we then have to manually do it, but at least we've got a record on Wendy's file that she signed up on to do this, to do a shift on this day. Um, and we just have to like fill in the last bits, few details. Um, so, so that's quite good. So it does make, it's good that it makes that record for you automatically, but it's lacking in detail. Um, so what are we on now? Oh, I need to move my thing. So yeah, the pros of, uh, using Civi Volunteer was that it just enables us to manage the reactive nature of these like referrals so if we got one in we within you know within a few minutes we could put a roll up on the on that web page send it out on a mass email to um to all our volunteers and you know usually within five minutes we've got somebody signed up um it was really easy for the volunteers to use for so that they could just click on the shifts that they um they were interested in. Um, it's good that the volunteer record is created uh, so that we don't have to go in and, and create a new record. At least one is, is there. Um, and if you did want to assign volunteers yourself, it's, it, it's really easy to do just within the project um, management tool. You can just, it just says assign volunteers and you just click on that. It's really easy. Um, easy to promote to the volunteers as I said and um, it links with our current system I think the cons which I've touched on already um, are that the the records yeah they don't update all the information automatically um, it 
like I said, it'd be good if the information that you type into the civvy volunteer role transferred over to that record so that you didn't have to keep manually adding it. Um, the roles could, yeah, they can't contain that personal information because they're advertised on a public page. So a capacity to have that sort of hidden data that could then be used to, um, to generate automated emails uh, much easier um, and update those um, CV records a lot easier would, would be better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, this is just our way of doing it. Maybe you guys might know way more than me <laughs> about CV volunteer, but we couldn't figure out because each role, each referral was so unique. Uh, we had to create all these individual roles um, and like I said you can't delete them because then that deletes um, the record um, so it, it's a bit cluttered in our project sort of uh, management area because um, we've got so many roles on there um, so I don't know if you guys know anywhere around that or have any tricks but <laughs> um, yeah automated email again it is great that you can uh, tailor that to whatever you want it to say, but unless it can send out like d relevant information, it was kind of, um, you know, it, yeah, didn't do much really. Um, and then, yeah, so all the shift all the records that were created were automatically set to sh scheduled and they didn't um go to completed when um you know after the date and time that was supposed to be done so which is a bit frustrating because then you have to go in and manually change them all to completed but uh, by the same token it, it did make sure that we keep on track of you know um shifts that were ongoing um and there was just a few technical hitches with sometimes there's just creating duplicate shifts or blank ones are popping up and we've no idea why and <laughs> you know all that sort of thing so um there's a few technical blips we've had with it um but you know it has been a godsend to to be able to manage this and and use those sort of email templates and the mass mailings out to all the volunteers um in order to manage it all um it's not the way we usually manage volunteers so like i said it is totally new to us so you guys might be might know more than than me like i said um about how to use it and things like that um but yeah i mean any questions or any advice from you guys <laughs> Or anything to add, Caroline, you know, if I've missed anything. <laughs> what else have I missed? Oh, I can't hear you, Caroline. No, nothing to add right this minute, Louisa. <laughs> you covered all the pros and cons pretty well. Yeah. Is that it how... Is I was just going to say the public sign up aspect is really good because you don't have to constantly be aware of the availability of any of your volunteers because they're actually they're making an active decision to sign up um, so it's kind of like a, you're not you don't have to do that side of the matching that they're, they're matching themselves to the opportunity yeah I, th I think that was really important for us because we had such limited capacity staff wise that we just we needed something where yeah people could 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 assign themselves they could look at roughly where it was and what it when it was and um, we had all their availability but at the end of the day it, that can constantly change in itself so it's yeah it made it so much easier to just say right here's what we need and people just we we've never gone wanting for a volunteer so. You know, we've always had loads of volunteers, so I don't know what it would be like in a situation where you were, you know, struggling for them. Mm. We've got a few more, a few more people have entered in. Has any, has anyone?
got any questions or want me to go back on anything or do you guys use it differently like <laughs> Um, I, I was wondering, um, you say you do, it's not how you would normally work with volunteers, um, mm. but it is something that you've had to use because in a sense you've been asked to scale up um, because of current events. Yes. Um, or scale up in a particular direction, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so would you, would, would you see this being how, something you would normally integrate now that you've seen it and used it? Mm. Is it something you would think, well, yeah, we could use this ongoing with our volunteers or is it actually, uh, does it create hassles that you would otherwise avoid in the smaller scale or like, does yeah. it, is it something you would want? Or is yeah, I think, would... I think it would be worth trying with some of our um, normal volunteering. So with our a lot of our so our charity works with older adults uh, we run things like groups and befriending and things like that and do that sort of social support side of things so a lot of volunteers when they come on board um, they tend to do one thing like regularly if you see what I mean whilst this has been you know different every day loads of different yeah. things going on yeah um so in that sense the sh the kind of having the shifts listed and people signing up for things doesn't necessarily ap apply because we just you know we just know we're going to have a volunteer um yeah. you know come every week but saying that there are like one-off events and things like that um that crop up and we just need volunteers really quickly so and i think for some of our tech savvy volunteers and I say tech savvy, this is just clicking a button and pressing <laughs> sign up. But it's a high benchmark. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, <laughs> that that is tech savvy for us for, for a lot of our, you know, service yeah. users and, and things like that. So it could be used, but I I would say that um probably half our volunteers don't even you know use email or like interact with email and things that i don't don't like to be online so um so yeah i have to do a lot of like print and things as well to to sort of access them but yeah i mean moving forward into the digital age and as people get more digitally minded this sort of thing will be really really helpful i, d I don't does anyone else use civic volunteer like or use it in a different way to this because yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've not come across anybody who uses it at all <laughs> in Leeds. <laughs> so um, we're the only emergency hub using it um, to do this. How everyone else is managing with spreadsheets and things, I really don't know. But, um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, chime in if, if, if you guys use, use it in a different way. Well, I'm, I'm actually going to pause us there because okay. we've had a message in our chat that's been put by one of the um, one of the bosses um, of the event saying oh. that uh, they're hoping it's going very well and they're hoping that we'll be able to come back to the main hall sometime soon. Um, okay. So I think you've played the time perfectly. Okay. Um, and uh, they've also asked us to nominate someone to report back. Um, Chad, I'm a slightly worried about um i was i wasn't pretty warned about that um <laughs> so if anybody feels like they could give a, a really brief synopsis just of what we've covered um just kind of um in a sense i think it, it's quite simple quite simple really because i think louise has um, gone through it in very easy detail for us uh, we could just mention a couple of pros a couple of cons um and what it what it's been like Does anyone feel confident enough to be able to do that Grand, that's, a, that's, that's me doing that then. Um, okay, so uh, we'll... Oh, oh my God. Oh, what oh that's the end of your slideshow, that's great. Uh, <laughs> we'll head out of here. Um, if you haven't got a link, just look in the chat um, room there, uh, in the chat window, to access the chat, just move your mouse around, and at the bottom middle, you'll see the chat icon. You can click on the chat yeah. icon, that brings up the chat box. In the chat box there, there's a link. Um, hit that link and you can head out from here and back into the main conference. Cool. Thanks so much, everybody.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it was very nice. Thanks, Thank you.